Shannon Bradley Colleary began blogging because she wanted to hear something other than the voices in her own head playing Pinnacle at 3 a.m. Shannon's favorite thing in the world is eating Malamars dipped in oak barreled Chardonnay while her daughters watch Modern Family as her husband tosses frozen grapes into her mouth. <laughs> she is also fond of tetherball. Shannon would like to share with you what she's learned about sex now that she's in her 40s. Thank you. This is very serious information. You should be taking notes. Here's what I know about sex now that I'm in my 40s. If you gain weight, some of it will go to your boobs. <laughs> That's good. After 40, it isn't just your ears or your nose that continue to grow and become bigger. Some of your lady bits will get bigger too. Last month, five mariachi singers ran to the table where my husband and I were dining, tripped, fell, and were never seen again. I think they fell into my vagina. <clears throat> I can't be entirely sure because I didn't feel anything. <laughs> but sometimes in the shower, I hear the faint echo of Guantanamera. <laughs> Somewhat disconcerting. In your 40s, you will take your orgasms however you can get them. Let's face it, you know, people are very competitive about their orgasms, like they're climbing Mount Everest. Did you summit? Or did you only get to base camp? Did you need an oxygen tank? Or a Sherpa? Grappling hooks? Or were you able to summit barefoot, reading holy sand scripts in nirvanic bliss? My orgasms have always been like calculus. I have to stand on the big toe of my left foot hips cantilevered toward Mecca, <laughs> singing peyote-induced incantations over a burning sage bush while doves are released north by northwest into the aurora borealis. I mean, fuck that. <laughs> you know, these days, I just don't care about my orgasms. If I have them, great. If I don't, I've got nothing left to prove people. After set, I'm sorry, after 40, sex is no longer risky and may, in fact, prolong your life. Unless we're Susan Sarandon or on a hormone cocktail, we are not going to become teen mothers. And we're more likely to die from heart arrhythmia than from STDs. And so at our age, sex pencils out cost-effective, boosts immunities, it actually can ca cure cancer. Don't tell anyone that I told you that. Um, and for those of us who are religious and having sex out of wedlock, we really don't care if we burn in the everlasting fires of hell. We are just thanking God that we're still getting laid. <laughs> in your 40s, you should try something new occasionally just to spice things up, like maybe having sex in the back of your minivan at 11 p.m. on a Monday night on Beverly Drive. Not that Henry and I did that, but... If, hypothetically, we did do that, the policeman who shined his mag light into the cargo hold, you know, would just see two middle-aged people so thrilled to be busted for lewd and lascivious behavior that he would not even bother, you know? I mean, do you really want to bust people who need hair plugs and a bike guard? <laughs> At our age, there's no need to be threatened by fantasies. If you've if you're having sex in your 40s, it might be with someone you've known for quite some time. Someone who loves you, even though maybe he saw you nursing your newborn on the toilet because <laughs> you were trying to delicately deliver your first postpartum poop. <laughs> and it may be someone you love, even though he leaves his poop in the toilet because he's so proud of it. So if from time to time, in your mind, you're making love to Chris Hemsworth with his Thor's hammer, um, or your partner just happens to mention that Sofia Vergara broke up with her boyfriend as he's unclasping your bra strap, you won't take it personally. After 40, sex is funny. When I was younger, sex was very serious business. It was very Melrose Place. You know, with intense gazes and catatonic Andrew Shue repartee. <laughs> Sydney, I want you. 
I want you so bad, but I'm troubled by my own beauty. God forbid that you made a sexual faux pas, hairy armpits, big graying underwear, some ill-timed vaginal flatulence. That never happened to me, but I've heard that it, it exists. So last month, when Henry rolled me powerfully beneath him, we both fell off the bed. And, <laughs> and uh, I may walk the rest of my life with a limp, but after we stopped laughing, we made love on the floor. So finally, in your 40s, it's a good idea to go to bed naked if you want to get lucky. Because now you have arthritis, carpal tunnel syndrome, cauliflower ear, and phlebitis, you cannot possibly expect to be able to shuck your pajamas from a horizontal position. <laughs> and, you know, let's not forget about the entropy of our lives. Henry and I have been together 15 years. We have two daughters we have to keep off the stripper pole. <laughs> two cats that might eat us if we nap too deeply and a 10-year-old minivan that smells like Jimmy Hoffa's corpse. When we get into bed at night, we just want to sleep, and if we're not sleeping, we really want to watch younger, hotter people having sex on Game of Thrones. Yeah, or TMZ cellulite, celebrity cellulite. Um, so when the marriage maintenance egg timer goes off, we get into bed without the expectation of sex, but with the mandate of a massage. Then things evolve. This man who piqued my curiosity and passion 15 years ago has his hands on my body. And suddenly this body that has had children and age-related ailments takes on dimension. Henry's hands follow the curves. Suddenly I've got thighs and hips and belly and breasts. Some places are softer than I'd like them to be, but some are still firm and wholly human and corporeal for this short time that I have on planet Earth. And for that time, regardless of age or in and out of shapeness, I re-inhabit my body. I'm reminded that I exist, and this is sexy. <laughs>